Ladies and gentlemen, do you know what time it is? Time for me to get a haircut. It's getting a little, getting a little shaggy. <laughs> like soinks. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is actually a really serious topic. Uh, so we're going to bring things back down and talk about Russia. <laughs> yes, that Russia. The same Russia that's been making some interesting comments about war crimes, which is strange because they appear to be committing war crimes. If you haven't heard, Russia sent a bunch of troops to Ukraine as part of a special military operation. And Ukraine was like, hey, uh, the rest of the world, anybody feel like helping? And a bunch of people went, yes, I do feel like helping because I want excitement, adventure, or I have PTSD and going back to war will uh, solve my problems, which... Uh, short term, actually, apparently, yes. Long term, maybe not so much. Uh, I'm not a psychologist, so uh, I can't give you really good information on that. PTSD is complicated. It's an invisible injury. Talk to your soldier buddies to make sure they're okay. Anyway, Russia has captured a few of these volunteer soldiers and is saying, hey, these are mercenaries. They are not protected under the Geneva Convention, and therefore we will probably execute them for crimes against Russia, despite those crimes against Russia being in Ukraine, the place that Russia is kind of like invading. So don't know how much sense that makes. I'm not a geopolitical analyst, so we're going to keep going. But before we go down that path, we need to take a little road less traveled. Thank you, Robert Frost. Which is a weird... <laughs> War crimes and Robert Frost. It's an odd combination. Anyway, the Geneva Conventions are basically a series of treaties that say, hey... If I've signed this and you've signed this and our people are fighting each other, here are some rules. You wouldn't believe this, but Ukraine and Russia have both signed the Geneva Conventions, so they should apply, right? Well, you could certainly make an argument that Russia, having signed these Geneva Conventions, is not doing what they agreed to. Which brings us back on track to the main topic of this video, which has to do with some soldiers that were captured by Russian forces. Now, these were volunteers, people who said, yes, I would like to fight for Ukraine, with Ukraine, in defense of Ukraine. But Russia's like, no, these are mercenaries. These aren't, uh, these aren't the armed combatants that are afforded protection to the Geneva Convention, so... Which raises the questions. Are these, in fact, mercenaries per the Geneva Convention? According to Article 1 of the International Convention Against the Recruitment, Use, Financing, and Training of Mercenaries, for the purpose of the present convention, a mercenary is any person who is specially recruited locally or abroad in order to fight in an armed conflict, is motivated to take part in the hostilities essentially by the desire for private gain, and, in fact, is promised by or on behalf of a party to the conflict material compensation substantially in excess of that promised or paid to combatants of similar rank and functions in the armed forces of that party, is neither a national of a party to the conflict nor a resident of territory controlled by a party to the conflict, is not a member of the armed forces of a party to the conflict, and has not been sent by a state which is not a party to the conflict on official duty as a member of its armed forces. So to be considered mercenaries under the Geneva Convention, all six of those things have to apply. Let's check real quick. Oh, I see. Is motivated to take part in the hostilities essentially by the desire for private gain, and in fact is promised by or on behalf of a party to the conflict, material compensation substantially in excess of that promised or paid to combatants of similar rank and function of the armed forces of that party. <gasps> I don't think that's happening. I don't think any of the soldiers that were captured are being paid in excess of what a soldier of the same or similar rank or function or duty would be paid. So, I mean, since that one's out, technically none of these people can be mercenaries. I could be wrong about that, though. I don't, I don't know what their pay structure is. I don't see their paychecks. I'm not privy to their bank account. But let's keep checking down this list. Oh, look at this. Is not a member of the armed forces of a party to the conflict. Well, they are. They're part of a special volunteer unit, which means that they're part of the army. They fall under the army. They are under the command of the army. They are part of that Ukrainian army. So, yes, they are combatants. They do fall under the Geneva Convention. But a third thing, and this one applies to the British soldiers, is neither national of a party to the conflict nor a resident of territory controlled by a party to the conflict. Now, those British soldiers were living in Ukraine, so as long as they met the elements of what a resident of Ukraine is, per probably Ukrainian law... 
that doesn't apply either. So we have one thing that probably doesn't apply, one thing that definitely doesn't apply, and one thing that definitely doesn't apply to the British soldiers. In fact, one of those British soldiers definitely cannot be considered a mercenary because, and I'm quoting the uh, former housing secretary in Newark MP, quote, this is a British citizen, but who also holds Ukrainian nationality, is married to a Ukrainian, joined the Ukrainian armed forces in the normal way prior to Vladimir Putin's illegal invasion, and has been serving in the armed forces, end quote. Not a mercenary. But if that guy can be charged with a mercenary and given the death sentence, uh, I think it's unlikely that any of the other people who are captured will not also face a similar fate. Now, that does not mean they will be killed, but Russia's <laughs> continuing to play some very stupid games. And as we all know, when you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. The problem is the people who are playing stupid games also have nuclear weapons, so... <sighs> Getting the prizes to the involved parties could be a little tricky. But that's all I have for this topic. Those are my thoughts on it. Thought you all should know in case any of you were curious. If you want to look at another video I did addressing Geneva Convention claims, you can see it here. It has to do with uh, basically me complaining, as I usually do, about other people complaining that police are using tear gas, which violates the Geneva Convention, which, no, it doesn't. Like, flip it around and say, hey, protest medics, which I love, by the way. Uh, they were always very helpful to me. Hey, protest medics, uh, it's actually a violation of the Geneva Convention for you to wear that red cross symbol. So if you're going to make some complaints about this, maybe look inward. Uh, but again, the ones I interact with, lovely people, very helpful. So nothing against them. Just saying that if you're pretending to read the Geneva Conventions, maybe actually read it. Feel free to start right now. All of you watching, read the Geneva Conventions. They're actually pretty interesting. And uh, I'll stop rambling at this point. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, be good, stay safe.